welcome back um this is going to be video six and i would encourage anyone everyone watching these if you haven't seen the other ones to go back and watch them in order that's why i numbered them one two three four because i'm trying to explain what happened as consecutively as i can in the way in which everything unfolded there are things that you'll need to know about the beginning of the story to understand the end of the story. And even then, it's difficult to understand because it's kind of bizarre, very baffling. Um, this video is going to be a little bit different because this I really want this one to be about gratitude. As a life coach, and this is the first time I've, in any of these videos, I've been like, this is some coaching. Um... It is very important. What I want people to know and what I want people to learn is that it is so important. It is absolutely imperative to be grateful, even in the worst of all situations. Life is hard. Life sucks sometimes. Life is not fair. Life has never been fair and life never will be fair. And that's just kind of, it is what it is. Um, and my advice to anyone who is in a very dark place or has the whole world stacked against them is to find anything positive, anything that brings you joy, anything that brings you warmth, anything that you can find beauty in, even if it's only a tiny sliver in a whole ocean of sadness. You have to find it. In order to find it, you're probably going to have to look for it. Because regardless, the reality is that regardless of the situation that you or anyone else is in, there is going to be positives and negatives. And as a coach, I'm telling you that if you reflect on your past and you only point out the negative, which you can, I mean, you could do that if you want to, if that's what you want to focus on. All of the sadness, all of the pain that's happened to you. You're going to look for everything negative in every situation. You'll find it. You're going to find it. You'll find exactly what you're looking for. So even though something good may be hidden amongst just crazy insanity and the most difficult hardships, you need to find it. You need to find it and hold on to it. Guard it with a hitch fork good positive um comforting people and integrity amongst chaos is difficult to find it's not just going to pop out at you you have to look for it look for it hang on to it don't discount the positive even if everything sucks there's going to be something there that you have to find for yourself. You have to. No, nobody can do that for you. So this video is going to be more about gratitude. And I want to say some good things about other people, other groups that were a victims of circumstance as well. In my opinion, the fact that they were brought into any of this because they did do their job. They did work with integrity. You're going to hear me say a lot that the courts failed me, and the courts did fail me, but it wasn't everyone in the court that failed me. It was the system as a whole. It doesn't matter what system we make. If it's a system run by human beings who are inherently flawed and make mistakes, then there is no perfect system, and that's true with everything. So three one person in particular and two groups of people, I just want to say, you're amazing. Thank you. I see you. I appreciate you. Um, and I'm just going to hop right into that now. The first person is the judge who was overruling my custody case. I don't know her name. Um, and even if I did... I don't know, but it's 
going to be very clear that I have this huge campaign against CPS. I have this huge campaign about the injustices that were done to my children throughout my custody situation. That's going to become blatantly clear. And now you're going to hear me say nobody did their job. And that's me speaking from emotion because there were people who were involved just, just by going to work that day. Um, and the judge is definitely one of those people. The judge did not rule against me, first of all. The judge was always respectful of me and, and the entire situation. She handled everything, everything with grace and tact. Um, I do think, I do it, I do believe in my heart that that judge was genuinely um, trying to look out for the well-being of my children. And as a mother, I appreciate that beyond measure because nobody else was in that courtroom. I just, I really want to say um, just thank you to that judge. I don't ever want her to be um, brought into any of this as a way that she did anything wrong because she didn't. It was never her job to do these investigations. It was never, she's not a lawyer. She's not a CPS caseworker. She's a judge. It's her job to look at the information that has been presented to her in legal documents and be able to trust that the people working within the courts are telling the truth. And she did not have that luxury during this trial. When I go back, Going back through those legal papers is rough. It's really hard because I'm looking at these papers in black and white of all of these just blatant fabrications, lies. I mean, that case was so flawed in so many ways. It had nothing to do with her. She would have, that judge would have had no way of knowing that the other people were being dishonest. My lawyer didn't do anything to stick up and say, hey, this isn't right. Why are we not questioning this? Which she should have because there were many, many different discrepancies where you're like, well, I'm reading it and I'm just like, are you kidding? There are parts in those legal papers that they don't even have my name right. It's a totally different last name. And that's going to come up too um, in the next video when I talk about the annulment. I just don't ever want that judge, I don't want any of the nastiness that this case is about to shine light on. I don't want it to shine on to her because she didn't do anything wrong. She didn't. I'm not out here throwing people under the bus just because I'm pissed off that I can't see my kids for two years. I'm out here telling the truth. I'm out here telling exactly what happened and also I think it's important to be able to tell that story in its entirety we do need to acknowledge and sing the praises of the people who were working with integrity who were not culpable for any of this any of this that judge would have had no way of knowing like she would have had no way she didn't know she didn't know me personally all she knew was what was written in the documents and the way our system set up, she should have been able to trust that the things that she were reading, that she was reading, were true. And they weren't. And that's not her fault. That's not that judge's job to do these investigations. That's why we have lawyers. That's why we have CPS. That's their job. So the judge, it was, she was a woman. I, I don't remember her name. Um, but... She didn't, I don't ever want any of this to come back on her because she did not do anything wrong. She did her job and she was working with faulty intel and she didn't know that. And to be fair, she should have been able to trust that the court appointed people that were working for the courts were telling the truth. She should have been, tr she should have been able to trust that nobody was perjuring themselves in those documents. And unfortunately, that was not something that was provided for her. She wasn't provided with any facts. There was, there was no, there was no nothing. Like she, there's no, she wouldn't have known. When I look at those papers, even though she didn't necessarily make the ruling, I was coerced into signing my children over by my, my court appointed attorney. Um, so even though she didn't make that ruling, 
Um, even if she had, I would understand that looking at those papers. I would probably make the same ruling, you know, because what's written in court documents about me versus the reality of who I am is, and what I've done is night and day. It's not the same. So I just wanted to say that. Very grateful for her. She did nothing wrong. She was very respectful of me. She was actually one of the only people who even acknowledged me when I spoke when I was there. And the in the one time that I did get to speak, which is at the which was the very last case, like the very last trial date, was the only time I was allowed to ever say anything because of my lawyer. Lawyer. Um and my question was without permission from my lawyer, because she had already messed everything up, I stood up and I said, can I ask the courts why I'm losing custody of my children? And the judge was taken aback because that shouldn't have been a question that I should have ever had to ask. And she said, um, so, and she, but she was very nice to me. She wasn't like mean or snotty. She was, it was very um, polite and proper. And she referenced the parental capacity, um, Evaluation, which we will get to that too, because Dr. Tuesday Smith has some explaining to do. Someone needs to check on this doctor's uh, medical board's credentials because, mm -mm, no, we'll get to that too. Um, the next group of people that I wanted to sing my praises to are the Virginia Beach Police Department. When you and I didn't, and I never thought about this before it happened to me, but when you're made homeless, okay, if you are living in your vehicle, which I was, I was living in my pickup truck for a little bit because of the annulment that was unfairly granted. That was a totally different judge, a different judge in the annulment than what was in the custody case. Two completely different people. They, like, they weren't, those two didn't overlap. But when you live in your vehicle, your home and police officers office work completely overlap each other okay you're basically sleeping at these people's job so and it's their job to protect our city to protect the surroundings so even though well first of all I don't every all every interaction that I had with every member of law enforcement was I mean it, I don't want to say it was great because no interaction with law enforcement is welcomed usually that's not something that we strive for but they were all so nice like they were all so kind to me they I felt protected I didn't feel um, I didn't feel targeted by any of VBPD, I felt protected by them, even though I was in a situation that wasn't very safe by living outside. They were always kind to me. Um, I have more body cam footage coming that will show that they were always very respectful of me. I mean, there was times when they could have been dicks, and they weren't. They weren't. I have nothing but good things to say about the fine men and women who are protecting our streets here in Virginia Beach right now. I was homeless. And, I mean, I don't know. I was just really impressed. I, With all the false police reports by Chris and the false, uh, the restraining order that was obtained on incredibly false pretenses, which we'll go over that in a very, in a future video as well, which will be upcoming um, they were great. The police, they were great. I don't have anything, I mean, I don't know. I think that that, I hope that that comes out more and more, but the Virginia Beach police officers, when I was in the worst, scariest situation I've ever been put in in my entire life, they were amazing. Even the times when a million people had their fingers pointed at me, like, da 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 it was almost as if the police were a little bit more intuitive 
than the other people working, like, in the courtrooms. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I feel like that that will um, show itself. But I just want to say thank you to all of all of the all of the men and women on the VBPD force, whatever. Y'all are great. Um, you make our city better. You make our city safer. I have no, I have nothing bad to say about that. And the third group of people that I want to really just shine a beautiful light on is the people working within Beach Psych and the people working within the mental health care system. And the reason I'm bringing this up is because in the video, which I think was video number two, about how Jennifer and Chris went to the magistrate and made up all this stuff, tried to have me, um, like, committed. <laughs> um, I say abuse of the mental health system when I say that in that video. And I'm not really watching these videos before I'm posting them all the time. It's hard enough just to make them. So you're just, you guys are getting whatever comes out. Um, but I did go back and look at that one. And I said abuse of the mental health system. And I want to clarify, I did not mean that I was abused by the mental health system. That is not what happened, not even close. What I meant when I said that was other people were abusing the mental health system to hurt me. They were using something that should be helpful as beneficial and necessary in our community to bring me pain, unnecessary pain. And that is unacceptable. And what I mean is they, when I, I want to explain, if you go back and watch video two, I'm explaining that I had to wait a few hours at the hospital before speaking to um, someone at Beach Psych who then released me and I just went home. But I think that that's important to remember because if I had to wait three or four hours to get spoken to, that means there were people who were actually sick and actually in crisis mode before and after me. Now let me ask you this. These services are imperative to a structured community and a functioning society. And if you've ever been in a situation where you feel like you're in crisis or, or, or maybe you have a child that you feel like is in crisis and needs medical attention right then, it's pretty fucked up that you might have to wait, your child might have to wait for needed medical services and attention because we have other people trying to weaponize our mental health system for control, for spite, just to be nasty. It's disgusting, it's unacceptable, but as far as how I was treated when I, in that short time and what I've experienced pretty much forever is I was not abused by the mental health system. What I meant was they were abusing the mental health system to hurt me. And that's not okay. That is not okay. Um, but the people who are working in those facilities, I'm not saying that anything, like they actually did their job. I am so grateful for that doctor's due diligence and talking with me for so long during that interview before he released me to go home because we need that. We need that due diligence. He was he worked with integrity. He did his job. I feel like I could get these medical records and they would prove all of this. Um, but the fact that even he was lied to, he was a victim of circumstance in this situation because he had to get he had to get through you know help me or figure out what's going on with me before he could help someone who was actually suffering it's just gross it's it's exploitative it's manipulative it's corrupt and when you start weaponizing people's mental health against them anyways all of this all of the lack of stigma that we've been fighting so hard for goes away because the stigma doesn't matter anymore if someone's about to be you know detained against their will because someone else thinks I don't know it's 
anyways, this doesn't, this isn't meant to be bashing. This is meant to be a good, positive video. I just want to point out there were people who did their job. There were people who were victims of circumstance just as much as I was. And I just really want to point out the judge in my custody situation, she did nothing wrong. She worked with integrity. I think she is very smart. I think um, she, the rest of the machine wasn't working. It wouldn't have been possible for her to even notice or like step in and be like, something's not right here because of how many other parts were broken. You know what I mean? I don't know if that makes sense, but the judge, she was amazing. Um, I have nothing but respect for the judge that worked in my custody case, even though it did not work out in my favor because that wasn't her fault. It just wasn't. Um, the police, thank you for your service. Thank you for keeping your eyes open. Thank you for being objective. Um, I just, once again, I don't have enough nice things to say about the Virginia Beach Police Department. Um, and, and, and the doctors, you know, and nurses that work in, in our psych facilities. It's sad that they have to work with, I mean, it's not sad, but it's unfortunate that we are relying on these other people's integrity, but we can't rely on the lawyer's integrity, CPS integrity, that it takes a doctor whose job is not to enforce any laws, his job is to treat medical conditions, to step up and be like, mm, wait a minute, like that's not, that's not how it should be, but I'm very grateful for them, very grateful for all of you who have sent me and are continuing to send me the kindest of words. I, I mean, I can't express how much gratitude I have. You guys keep me going. My life coaching advice to you, even when shit sucks, find something good and hang on to it with your life. Hold on to it with your life. Thank you, everybody, again. Um, this is going to be, so this is video six. Uh, the next one will actually be about the annulment. Um, I also have a GoFundMe under a courthouse kidnapping for legal fees and backed up medical bills since Jonathan Brown at CPS Social Services has made a point to be sure that I cannot receive any Medicaid or any kind of um, benefits whatsoever, even though I'm, we'll get to that too. But thank you, thank you all. Um, and I just appreciate you and I want you to appreciate the people around you, the people around you who deserve your appreciation. Um, it's important, it's important in life if you only look for the negative, I mean, yeah, you can live your life like that if you want, just look for the negative, but you're going to be miserable forever because there's always negative. But likewise, there's also always some positive too. You And it's your job to find that. Um, so just thank you for watching and hopefully the next one will be tonight. So thank you guys so much.